lovely green seedless grapes. Hello Coco. That's my little black cat called Coco. Um, she's about, so don't be surprised if she wants to join in. But before I eat them, I just want to adjust the camera a little bit. There we go. I thought I'd do a little painting because I just feel in the mood. So what I've done, I've started off by mixing a green. I've got lemon, yellow and ultramarine. Then I thought it was too too lime so I tried a bit of cadmium and ultramarine and I thought it was too vivid so what I've done is I've added a little bit of raw umber just a little bit hmm not quite sure anyway you mess around with your paints and see what you come up with um, now I'm looking at the camera seeing this color it looks different color altogether but never mind yes just a minute that's cocoa. Anyway, let's have a little play. Let's get the water out of the way. So there's my colour. So where am I going to start? Well, quite nice really. Um, raw rumber, the reason I, I use that is because I'm going to use that for my stalk. But what I am going to do initially is with a bigger brush. This is a number eight. If you look at this bunch of grapes, it's sort of oblong with a corner sliced off. So I am just going to do a sort of shape. I'm sort of looking at the outline. More water because I don't want any hard edges but I'm not bothered about colours moving and bleeding and doing other stuff. See how really casual I am about this really casual and you will find my creative chums that if you do things in a rather cavalier manner they often turn out the best okay so we've got the odd gap of paper I can see through so what I'll probably do let me just get a bit of tissue absorbent towel, kitchen towel, whatever you call it. Just take a bit out. I'm not going to copy the shapes completely. Notice actually that some of the grapes, that one's quite small, and those are big, they're big, so we can mix them about a bit. And the reason I started with this shape first is because the raw umber will happily go over the top. So let's look a bit more at these shapes then. Let's look at that grape and let's just make a nice round blob. And we're going to make another nice round blob there. And then we'll do another bit of a blob there. And then we'll do another bit of a blob there. We've got one there. We've got one there. Let's bump that one out a bit bigger. You see this is all really quite wet so it's good because you're not going to get the harsh lines. So she just looking up to make sure this was recording. Um, there isn't actually one there but we'll we'll put one little one there. Okay there's one there that's okay there. Okay a bit more water just dipped my brush in and we're going to make a round edge there and a smaller edge there because we want a bit of space showing through and we're going to have a round one there and a little one there and then a big one there okay so there you've got the basic shape yes I know it's not exactly like that but that doesn't matter we also have a few highlights but they're not very very bright the grapes are quite matte I haven't washed them anyway yet so polish them up a bit that's fine okay what I'm going to do next is I want to do this in one take really if I can without fuffing about with drying time okay so let's look again at the shapes 
we've got another one I think is in front of that one and that one I think is in front of that one it will come together better once you get the stalks in in fact let's do that now let's just take the most off uh, raw umber and actually these have got very long stalks to the individual grapes haven't they okay here it comes there's your edge I'm not worried about a bit of bleeding it's a good job really because we can always take a bit off if you want and we can always paint over because we're going to be going over the top of this so we've got the end here let's make one there let's make one there let's have a smaller one there and this one I'm just going to dry that off a bit round there and we've got a really long one here look let's make it to there So you can start to place them where you like. Ah, oh, okay. So we've got those two. I mean, it doesn't matter. The thing is, just to have fun while you're doing it. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Now, I would really, I suppose, wait for this to dry and paint over but I don't want it to be that um, contrived that constructed we can start there again look okay I rather like that the way it's sort of um, bleeding and drying okay so where's my kitchen roll let's go back to the green and what I'm going to do is just redefine that one. Still using this number eight from the nice people at home hobby. I'll put the um, the link in the description. They do a set of brushes and these are absolutely gorgeous and they're not expensive which is even nicer. See where I'm holding the brush? Quite low down because I want to have control. Suck a bit of that out. Okay, that's fine. Let's go behind there and just drop a bit of colour in. And a bit more there just to make that shape. And this one. Let's go back to some green. Okay, now let's work our way around. That's dried off now. It could be a bruised grape, couldn't it really? It's nearly dried off. Let's accentuate the shape of this one. Don't get bogged down in the detail. Those of you who've watched quite a few of my videos and do my courses 
<laughs> get sick of the sick of the sound of me saying that. Don't get bogged down in the detail. You will, of course, all have your own style of painting, but I know a lot of people that I teach, they often say they want to loosen up. So, here you go. Um, I'll run it out of green. Okay, first rule, always mix enough green. I'm going to use the cadmium yellow. And to be honest, I'm not that bothered if it's not exactly the same. It's not bad. The cadmium is much stronger than the lemon. Just a teensy bit of raw umber there. Right, we've got one in shadow behind here. Oh, that's strong. Let's put a bit more in there and just give the indication of some shapes. I seem to have another stalk there. Oh, well, that can be behind it. Leaving occasionally a line between the grapes just to ring the difference. Let's get something to that stalk there. A bit too heavy there. And sometimes you get nice effects when you do some dabbing off. That's a mighty big one, isn't it? But some of them are really pretty big. But I think I might have to reduce that just a little bit. Um, we are the uh, although we want this to be a bit impressionistic and loose. It is, after all, just a a time um, fill up, if you like. I won't call it a time waster. Um, but we want it to be a bit believable. So what I will do is just put, define that there, then just move that colour out there. Okay, that's the one on the top. Then we've got one underneath. I'll have to define these a bit more. Another one and another one. So we've got a little clump together there. Now, what I'm going to do is we want some shadows and I'm going to try the ultramarine. So we want something in here to suggest that one's on top of that one. And suggest that one's on top of that one. And suggest something is under there. Suck that out a bit. That's just a little bit behind there. A little bit behind there. We want 
behind there and behind there Now, I really am going to have to wait for that to dry to do the next stage. Okay, not exactly dry, but near enough. Let's go in with a bit more of the darker colour, because when you compare them now, these really are quite light. Let's take some more ultramarine. If you find that sometimes you're not in a very good space, very good place in your head, doing something like this can help. It's all this mindfulness they keep telling us about. And to be honest, the way the state of the world is pretty much everywhere. We all need as much as we can of this. It's too dark. Oh, I don't know, it might be alright. Just outlined that one there. Now, didn't I have another one here? I think I got lost with my stalks. There we go, that'll do. Okay, right, it's, it's coming, it's coming. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. And so often with a lot of these videos I do, I want it to be something that doesn't go on too long. So if time is a, a bit of an issue with you, then... Uh, it doesn't take much to get set up and of course when you're only using a limited number of colours that makes it even easier as well. Now I think that is probably going to be enough and what I'm going to do is a bit of splattering for fun and Oh, as a watercolour pencil. In fact, what I could do, and don't forget this, folk, um, watercolour pencil. If you can't wait for it to dry, like me, <laughs> on this occasion, use a watercolour pencil. And you get that lovely, then, concentrated bit of colour. This is called Burnt Oxide. It's a sort of a brownie colour.
And we can just put a few bits in behind. And the, those these little stalks, they've got little sort of little fuzzy stick out bits. And while I'm at it, um, they call that leaf green. Hmm. Well, those are good. Do you think some of these grapes have lost the plot a bit? Now, I didn't know when I started this really what the outcome was. I didn't have an outcome in mind and I think that is something that is very helpful when you're painting, especially when you're learning. You get so uptight because you want it to be wonderful and you want to be good at it and you want the teacher to like it or your friends and what have you. But a lot of the time, the really the only thing that's important is whether you're having fun doing it. And that is really, really important. So I think it's a very good um, way of starting a painting, especially if you're just going to, oh look, I've got this bunch of grapes or I've got this tomato, I might as well paint it. Um, don't have any idea of how it's going to look at the end. Just do it. And I think that's rather fun. So, for what it's worth, I hope you enjoyed that and um, please share your paintings with me and anybody else who might like it and also please give me ideas sometimes I run out of ideas or I can't come up with something and whatever you are doing out there my creative chums enjoy your painting